quite difficult to comprehend first time through, second time through, the third time through. It's just mind-bending stuff. But it's fascinating when you sort of get it. Um, and then you lose it, and then you get it, and then you lose it, and then you get it. So you'll probably go through that cycle about twice before you leave it behind. I've gone through it about 10 times. And <laughs> I'm still going through it. It's really strange stuff. But it's remarkable that it works. But I, I did want to explain to you uh, it's in some detail, but I can't do it today because uh, I, I want you to see some more optics, or some of optics, um, before your class and the uh, demo um, lab. OK, so the idea here is that we uh, showed that um, Maxwell was able to sh prove that electromagnetic wave can be generated, uh, and that these, indeed, are what we call light, the stuff that we can see. Um, now, that's very important that light is a wave, and that it, wave properties are very important for light. We'll get into more of them uh, a little later when we talk about interference and diffraction. Those used wave properties. But we're regressing a little bit, or we're going to simplify things a little bit. We're going to talk about here what's called ray optics, or sometimes called geometrical optics, where we sort of forget about the wave nature of light. And all we're interested in, for these purposes, is that although light is a wave, you know, it has crests and valleys, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to say it's a beam going in some direction, which we call the ray. Uh, and the ray is perpendicular to these wave uh, surfaces. So if I wanted to show, for example, light coming from here, uh, from a light source here, I could, could draw waves like this, but I'm not. I, I, all I'm going to do is say it's a, it's a line, it's a ray with an arrow. And we're just going to follow the path of that ray through various uh, objects. Or so that's what we call ray optics or geometrical optics, because all that will come in is the geometry of the surface that we're dealing with and um, the material of, that, of these objects. But we're not going to worry about the fact that it's a wave and it can do funny things like interfere. Um, we will not even, we'll worry about its speed. We won't particularly worry about its wavelength yet. It turns out that materials have different speeds of, the, of light or electromagnetic radiation in a material depending on the wavelength materials do. We'll get into that. As I said, it's a very important subject because it, you can learn a lot about a material from how the light travels in it. Um, OK, so the first one, and I'm sure you've seen this before, so let me go through some of these things very quickly. And that is the first behavior of electromagnetic all. This, this applies actually to all electromagnetic radiation. Um, you, you can have microwaves, or you can have your infrared rays that we've used, and so on. And uh, well, let's see. Can you just oh, say, can you see? Let me try that. <laughs> I'm being very patriotic here. Yeah. Uh, this is, the idea is we have a beam of light. It's striking a mirror that I've placed on here. And if you have the perpendicular to the mirror, can people see this from way back yonder? Can you see this? Above? Yeah. Oh, great. You got your contacts in, right? <laughs> right? Okay. All right. So you have the normal, the normal to the surface is what we, how we describe the surface. We have an incident the angle here, which is the incident angle. Uh, and what you see is that the light comes off with respect to this at, another, at the angle. And uh, this is the reflected angle. But it will turn out that it's equal to the incident angle. I could uh, go through proofs, but I don't want to go through proofs today because we, I just want to give an overview of the whole thing so that you'll be ready for your lab and you'll be able to enjoy it more. Um, so th that's uh, the law of reflection. Uh, and it works for all waves. Now, one complication might be that um, the surface could be rough, in which case you would break down the law of reflection into a reflection off all the little irregularities of a surface. And most surfaces that we deal with, except for mirrors, you have a mirror on your, on your wall, on the bathroom wall or whatever, where you have a mirror, uh, that's very smooth. And so the light does bounce like this. It's kind of like a mirror. But if a surface like that, which is most of us, the light will come in at some, let's say it comes in like this. And now on this part, it will bounce that way. Now on this part, it may bounce that way. You see? And here, so th if you have a rough surface, we get what's called diffuse reflection, which is most things. Because if, if it were not so, you, everybody would be a mirror. You know? <laughs> and, and what you would see um, would be the, the light would come from somewhere else. Let's say if I were a mirror and that light is on, the light would go like this, or you, you would see yourself. You wouldn't see me. But the fact that you see me is because I'm diffusely reflecting the light, so I kind of see the surface. It's, it's, very, it's very interesting. I think I've given this analogy to you before. If you have a bathroom mirror and you take a shower and the mirror becomes foggy, you don't see yourself anymore. You see the, space, the mirror, right? I mean, it, it becomes not reflecting. Of, and you sort of see where the mirror was. You don't see yourself. Think about it. It's a very uh, interesting concept. So but, but most of us re um, reflect diffusely. OK? And that's. Uh, that. Then the other idea is that if the light does not reflect off the surface, but rather enters the surface, I'm going to kind of remove this uh, reflective surface, then what we have is refraction. You see the light was going this way. Let me see if I can draw its initial uh, direction. I don't want to cheat. Like that. And you see, oh, it's pretty obvious that it is bent. And the way we uh, analyze that is, again, we take the normal here and project the normal through into the material. And what you see is that the light comes in at one angle, incidence with respect to the normal, but it comes out at a different angle with respect to the normal. It's bent in this case. Let's see. In this case, uh, it's bent. Let's see how that actually is. Uh, I have my normal. I come in this way. I project the normal that way, and my light is bent toward the normal. That's how we, that's how we analyze that picture. Here's your normal. Here's your incident light, and here's here's the normal. You're bent toward. In other words, the angle of refraction here. is less than the angle of incidence. And it's, this, um, this is expressed by what's called Snell's law. Can you still see this writing from way back yonder? Would you write to have the lights on? Oh, well, OK. <laughs> uh, all right, you go going to live this way, that's fine. Um, and what you do is have, if, if, if you go from medium one, this is just a general law. My light is going from, uh, here's a normal. It's going from medium one, whatever it be, doesn't have to be air. 
it, and it goes into medium two, you have your incident angle, theta incident, and then you have the angle of refraction. Unfortunately, reflection and refraction have the same R, but I'm going to say refraction. Um, is that angle, again, with respect to the normal, having passed through it. The Snell's law says n1 sine theta incident equals n2 sine theta 2, or uh, oh, let, yeah, let's, let's, let's call theta 1 and theta 2, sort of easy, from medium 1 to medium 2. Medium 1, here's medium 2, whatever they are. Uh, and this, interestingly, it, it works both ways. You could turn it around. The light could be coming this way. You could start out with light in the dense medium. Oh, it looks denser here in this picture. And you come in at a certain angle, you'll bend away from the normal when you go into the less dense medium. So it actually is reversible. You could, the equation works perfectly well both ways, right? Okay. Oh, so I'm demoing these things. And here's this picture where you have the, uh, I don't think we can see, there's a certain amount of light that is reflected from this surface. I, I put the mirror there because I wanted more light to be reflected. But every time uh, an electromagnetic wave passes from one medium into a medium of different speed, where there's a different speed, part of it will be reflected. Always. Whenever there's a discontinuity in, in uh, the refractive index, that's what, oh, I didn't define this, did I? N1 is equal to C over the speed in, the, in this other medium, V1. Uh, so it's, it's telling you by what factor the speed of light is reduced. That is, that the velocity in the medium 1 is equal to C over N. And N is larger than 1, and so the velocity in, the, in any medium pretty much is less than C. In other words, light slows down when it passes through a medium. Uh, okay? Please tell me if there's anything. I'm trying to go pretty fast because I think you know all the stuff. I understand, right? And it's, e it's pretty easy stuff. Uh, yes? Uh, that's what I tried to say at the beginning. Repeat what, I, what you said. The, wave, the, the ray is normal to the wave. That's what I was trying to say at the beginning. We're trying to represent this wave, which might be a, you know, a large wave going like this. And the wave fronts are the lines of, the, say, the crests of this wave. So these are the wave fronts, which is sort of these. Okay, or it could be points of the same phase, as it were, the same shape. Those are the wave fronts. And the ray is going perpendicular to that wave front. Is that clear? Yeah, thanks for asking. It's a good point. That's a term I didn't use before, wave front. But that's the idea. So the ray is just trying to tell us the direction in which the wave is going. In fancy language, we learned the so-called pointing vector. That's the direction that the pointing vector goes. That is the way the energy in the wave is going. And so here we show this picture again. And an important point is that when a light wave goes into a different medium, its speed changes. But the speed... Uh, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So what changes? When, when, when V changes, what changes? Does F, something has to change. If C goes to V, it has, the wave had a frequency and a wavelength, but what changes when you go into a new medium? And, and there's a little physics feeling that has to be. See, the wave is coming in, and when it's traveling through the new medium, what's doing? It's shaking the atoms in the new medium. It's an electric wave, and these atoms are electric charges. So as it comes in, it shakes the atoms. And it shakes them at the same rate as it was moving up and down in free space. So the frequency doesn't change. What happens is that the wave slows down. It's like soldiers marching to a certain drumbeat, boom, 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 boom. And if they step into a, a muddy field or into a forest, they still keep the same drumbeat. They just can't move as fast. They'll probably bunch together because the fellows behind catch up with the fellows who just step into the mud. So they catch up so their wavelength gets shorter. So that's the picture you want to have. It's very important. What is changing here? And so it is the wavelength that changes. As V goes down, the wavelength goes down. This one. That's important. And it, it, you can get, you don't have to remember very much. Just think of the physics. Uh, and then we have this table of uh, <coughs> these n values. Uh, now, gases like air have a very low uh, n value because there isn't much material or many atoms. There. What's happening is the atoms are being shaken by the electromagnetic field, and they're re-radiating. And they build up their own secondary field. And the two fields, the incident one and the generated one by the material, sum together. And it turns out that th that superposition of secondary wave and primary wave goes a little bit slower in the medium. And this is in preview. I shouldn't vary too much. But if, for example, the, the, the primary wave is near a resonance. Remember when, when you show resonances? You drive a very large amplitude of oscillation at a near a resonance. That's when the index of refraction can change very much because the secondary wave that's generated is very strong. So you, that's why I say that the index can change the frequency because if you get near a resonance of the material, the velocities change greatly. So you'll get big changes in the uh, refraction of light when you're near a resonance of the material. But okay, so th that's why I've kind of emphasized at one frequency. They, they've just given you here, it says somewhere, I, uh, 589 nanometers, the yellow line of sodium. See, at that one frequency, that's what the speed of light is doing. But if you go to a different place, even, even with sodium, uh, it will have a different thing because it depends how close you want to the resonances of sodium. So that's something to be interested, uh, pointed out. On the other hand, um, most materials, solids and liquids, invisible, mind you, uh, that is certainly this wavelength here, the yellow line of sodium, have an index of refraction. If you had a guess, say one and a half. But, but as I say again, it, it varies widely with frequency, depending on how close you are to some of the characteristic properties of vibrations of the material, and so on. OK, then we have a refraction. And one way we understand how refraction works is, again, this idea that you have light coming in going at high speed. And, and the, the light beam, when it hits the material, the, the part that hits first slows down. And so the other part of it, if it hits at an angle, the other part is going faster. It sort of gets ahead of it. And so the whole beam basically changes and bends toward the normal. Because the first part of it is stepped into the slow part first. And it's the upper part of the wave. I'm using wave terms. Yep, here's a kind of funny thing. We're talking about geometrical optics. I said, forget about the wave nature. But if you really want to understand why it's happening, you have to say, well, it's a wave. And part of the wave went into the material first. And the rest of it advanced further. And so overall, it's tilted uh, toward the normal. So to really understand these things on a deeper level, you have to um, understand that it's a wave. And this is a thing called Huygens principle. Huygens was a very fine physicist, a Dutchman, a uh, contemporary Isaac Newton, actually. In fact, um, he he um, was in disagreement with Newton. Newton thought that 
light was particles. And Huygens said, no, it's waves. And he came up with this kind of idea of how to um, see how waves enter a medium. It turns out Huygens was right. Newton was wrong on this point. Until Einstein came along and said, well, maybe they really are particles too. So <laughs> um, we'll see that in quantum theory where you have the idea of photons, which are kind of light particles. But in any case, for many properties, it's best to think of them as waves. And we can understand both refraction, namely the bending of the light um, so it's coming in at, at, um, at this angle with respect to the normal, and it goes out at that angle with respect to the normal uh, when it slows down. And um, here's a, one of the curious things. Uh, let's see. I think to do this one, I have to turn the thing around. Here's, um, here's what's called total internal reflection. You see, because here's a light coming in, and it's hitting. Now it's going from a dense medium. Let's look at this part. The dense medium into a less dense medium. And in so doing, it bends away from the normal. So the light is coming in. Here's the normal. Let's see if I can erase some of these things. So we'll see better what's going on here. Uh, it's, uh, the light's coming this way. Now, this is the, because this is uh, a sphere, a, a, well, a circular piece, it's, it's, it's going straight along a radius of the circle. So just, that's, that's why I chose this shape. Because it goes in along the radius, and um, if you don't do anything, it, it's along a radius and it goes out. If, if it's the normal, it goes along the normal. But without, so I can keep the angle here pretty, pretty same. But you see, now the normal is this way. Oh, that's bad for the people in the back. OK, here's the normal. And I'm changing the angle to, of the normal. So the light has come in with respect to the normal, and it's bending away because I'm going from dense to less dense. So I'm bending it away, and look at the nasty thing that's going to happen when. I reach here. It doesn't get out. Because it, 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 it's trying to bend, but once you get to 90 degrees, you're inside again. And I know it's totally reflected. When you reach a certain uh, angle of um, incidence between the, the normal and the incident wave. So that's called the, the critical angle. Uh, so the angle of incidence here would be the critical. So here's my normal. The angle of this incoming beam with this normal would be called the critical angle. At that angle, the light is totally internally reflected. Now, you may say, oh, that's nice, but who cares? Yes, you have to, this one you have really, it has a big impact because you have what's called um, fiber optics. You heard about that, where you can transmit tremendous amounts of information on a light beam. The way they do that is with total internal reflection. They send a light beam down a fiber, and it's totally internally reflected. So you can send it for long distances. It doesn't get out. It's doing this kind of phenomenon. Uh, let's see. No, no, see. It's doing this kind of phenomenon. It's bouncing around inside a glass fiber. And because you're, you're using light as your carrier medium, better than, better than microwaves, Better than radio waves, you can put a tremendous amount of information on light, and they can carry uh, inf information. So this is this is a, this total internal reflection leads to fiber optics, which is a big business. Um, now I'm going to say one other little thing, which we'll take up another time. The light actually doesn't really bounce immediately back into the medium. And here's another technique that you may uh, we'll talk about. I hope later. The light actually sort of gets out a little bit before it done, it gets, before it turns back in. It, it can't really live out there, but it, it sort of leaks out a little bit. And um, so this. This allows you, if you want to say, uh, study a very, very thin amount of material, you can smear it on the surface here. And the light is sort of trapped right at the surface within about a wavelength of light. And so the light actually sees this very thin amount of material. And you can actually study very thin layers. If you ever have to do that, it's called, actually called frustrated total internal reflection. By putting a the material there, you can actually catch some of that light. So you frustrate the totality of reflection because you can sort of suck a little bit out of the part that leaks out. And this is a very nice technique. I don't know if any of you ever use that in the lab, frustrated TIR? Yeah, if you have a very small amount of material and you want to study it, you can. Uh, there are people that sell these kinds of instruments. Uh, so that's another interesting phenomenon. The other is polarization by reflection. Now, let me see. I changed the story around a little bit. Um, let's try this all again here. Now, I have no disasters before. Let's see. Ah, now, when I'm near, um, near perpendicular, OK. Oh, OK. <laughs> Um, here, I'm, I'm trying to, um, I don't know if you can see that there's a light coming through this polarizer, this polarizer that we've used before. It's dim, but there's some light here. If you get the angle just right, let's see. Let's see. I think you should be able to stop this from reflecting. Maybe about there. What happened here? Oh. What? Um, is there a difference here? Of course, the problem is partly that this thing is part, just partly transmitting. Hmm. Let's see, I think the angle is...